Horror Theater presents Horror Poems. I Live in a Zombie Apocalypse by Burley Zang. Believe the brain is a cage of light and rage when it shuts off something else which is on. There's no better reason than now to lock the doors or windows. The moon will shine for God knows how long, as if it still matters, as if someone is trying to recall a dream. Believe the brain is a cage of light and rage when it shuts off. Something else switches on. There's no better reason than now to lock the doors, the windows, turn off the sprinklers and porch lights, save the books for fire in darkness. We learn to read that it moves along the horizon. Across the perpetuity of a gun scope, a flicker of shadows, a rustling of trash in the bodies of cities long emptied. Not a soul lives in this house, in this house of this house. Go on, stiffen the heart, quicken the blood, to live in a world of flesh and teeth. You must learn to kill what you love. Is love what that what can die? Black Cat by Raina Maria Riccia. A ghost, though invisible, still is like a place. Your sight can knock on, echoing, but there, within this thick black pelt, your strongest gaze will be absorbed and utterly disappear, just as with a raving red men, when nothing else can ease him, charges in his dark night howling pounds on the padded wall and feels a rage taken in and pacified she seems to hide all that looks that have fall ever fallen into her so like an audience she can look over menacing and sullen and curled asleep with them but all at once as if awakened she turns her face to yours and with a shock you see inside, tiny, inside the golden ember of her eyeballs, suspended like a prehistoric lie. <coughs> Fields of Skulls by Mary Carr Stare hard at the fabric of night, if you put put dispose the dark. Let's say the window you picked is black. Suppose you stamp, you spent hours at sleepers. Drinking gin after I Love Lucy reruns are gone off. Stare. Like your eyes are false, and behind any sh- night's taut scrim will come the forms. Respect pressing from the other side. For you, a field of skulls, angled jaws and eye sockets, a zillion scoped up crania that plain wants you think to look. You know such fields as this, for criminals roam your very block, and even history lists monsters like Adolf and Uncle Joe, who stalk the earth from the all. Plus minor baby eaters undentified, probably in your mouse, in your very mist. That's the disgruntled mail clerk from your job. Has already snatched your name on a scratched your name on a bullet. That's him rusting in the Esselex. Who will caress the fault, provides there's no better spot for you than here. Your square yard is chin's sofa. Hearing the bad news piped steady from your head. The night is black. You stare at the f- furious stare, confident there's no gods out there. In this way, you're blind to your own eyes. In tr- intricate machine, to the l- light it sees by the luck of the birth and all. You remember loves. If the skulls are there, let's say they're pressed. Do press towards you, almost night scrim. Would could they not stare with slack jawed envy at the fine flesh that covers your scalp, 
the numbered hairs, the force your hands hold. Samhain by Anne Flint. The Celtic Halloween in a season leaves should love, since it gives him leave to move through the wind towards the ground. They are watching while they hung. Legend says that it is seen, switching darkness like a name. Now when drying grasses veil earth and the sky in one last pale wave, as Wilton dries. To bring winter back, when the spring who we die, we who die ourselves can peel back another kind of veil that hangs amongst us like thick smoke. Tonight, as at last, I feel it shake. I feel the night stretching away, thousands along behind the days, till they reach the darkness where all of me is an ancestor. Move my hand, I'll feel a touch. Move in me when I brush my very my own mind across another. I am my mother's mother. Saw his footsteps in my waiting self. I find her, and she brings arms that carry answers for me. Intimate, a waiting bounty. Carry me, she leaves this trail through a shudder of the veil. A leaves like an amber, where she stays, a gift of a per- perpetual gaze. <laughs> Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti Morning and evening, maids heard the goblins cry, Come buy our orchard fruits, come buy, come buy, Oranges and quinces, lemons and oranges, Plump, unpecked cherries, melons and raspberries, Bloom down cheek peaches, swart headed mulberries, Wild fed cranberries, crab apple boat dewberries, Pineapple blackberries, apricot strawberries, All right together in summer weather. Morns that pass by, fair eaves that fly, come by, come by, our grapes fresh from the vine, pomegranates full of vine, baits and sharp bunches, rare pears and garbages, green, green arbages, damsons and bilberries, taste them and try, bright fire like barberries, figs all to fill your mouth, citrons from the south, sweet to the tongue and sound to the to I come by, come by, evening by evening among the brookside rushes, Laura bowed her head to hear, Lizzie veiled her blushes, crouching close together in the cooling weather, with clasping arms and quartering lips, with clinging cheeks and fingertips, lie close, Laura said, pricking up her golden head, we must not look at goblin men, we must not buy their fruits. Who knows upon what soul they're fed, their hungry thirsty roots? Come by, call the goblins, hobbling down the glen. Oh, cried Lizzie, Laura, Laura, you should not peep at goblin men. Lizzie covered up her eyes, covered close, lest they should look. Laura reared her glossy, reared her glossy head, and whispered like the rest of the brook. Look, Lizzie, look, Lizzie, down the glen tramp little men. One holds a basket, one bears a plate, one lugs a golden dish of many pounds weight. How fair the vine must grow, whose grapes are so luscious, how warm the wind must blow. Through those fruit bushes, no, said Lily, no, 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 our officers should not charm us, their evil grace should would harm us. She thrust a dimpled finger in each ear, shut eyes and ran. Chris Laura, r- close to linger, Wondering at each merchant man, 
One had a cat's face, one whiskered a tail, one trampled at a tra- rat's pace, one crawled like a snail, one like a wombat proud of troops and fairy, one like a rattle, trembled, hurry, scurry. She heard a voice like voices of doves, cooling altogether, it sounded kind of full of loves, in a pleasant weather. Laura stretched her gleaming neck, like a rushed embedded swan, like a lily from the back beck. Like a moonlit parlour, poplar branch, like a vessel at the launch, when it lays, le- 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 restrain is gone. When its last restrain is gone, backwards up the glossy m- mossy glen, turned and trooped the goblin men, with a shrill repeated cry, "Come by, come by!" When they reached where Laura was, they stood stock still upon the moss, leaning each other, brother with queer brother, signalling each other, brother with sly brother. One sat his basket down, on reared his plate. One began to weave a crown, of trend of leaves and rough net, rough nets brown. Men shall not such in any town. One heaved a golden weight, or dish of fruit to offer her. Come by, come by, was still their cry. Laura stared, but did not stir. Long, but had no, but had no money. A wish tell merchant better of taste. In tones as smooth as honey, a cat face pearled, a rat face spoke a word, a welcome and snail paced even was heard. One parrot voice so jolly, cried pretty goblin still, a pretty polly, one whistled like a bird, for two faced Laura spoke in haste. But sweet, tooth Laura spoke in haste, good folk, I have no coin to take where to purloin. I have no copper in my purse, I have no silver either, all my gold is on, on the furs, it shakes in the wind, to windy weather, above the rusty heather, you have much gold upon your head, they all answered all together, buy with us, with a, a golden curl, she clipped a precious golden curl, she dropped a tear, more rare than pale, they struck the fruit globes, fairer red, sweeter than, than honey, from the rock, stronger than men, rejoicing wine, clearer the water flowed at juice. He never tasted such a law. How sh- could it cloy what length for use? He sucked and sucked and sucked the more. Fruits that had unknown orchard bore. He sucked until her lips were sore, then hung the empty vines away. Then flung the empty vines away, and covered up some co- one kernel of stone. She knew not where its night or was night or day, she turned home alone. Lisa met at her at the gate, full of wise unbraidings. Dear, you should not stay so late. For night, twilight is not good for maidens. Lee should not loiter in the glen, in the haunts of golden lobby men. Do you not remember Jeanie? How she met them in the moonlight, took their gifts, both choice and ready, and ate their fruits and wore their flowers, plucked them blue blowers, bowers, where summer ripens at all hours, but even in the moonlight, she pined and pined away, sought them by night and day, found them no more, but dwindled and grew grey. They fell with the first small snow, but while to this day no grass will grow, where she lays now, I planted daisy, there a year ago, that's never blow, you should not loiter so. Nay, hush, said Laura, nay, hush, my sister, I ate, I ate my fill. Yet my mouth waters, tomorrow night I will, buy more and kiss her. But done with sorrow, I bring you plums tomorrow, fresh on your mother's twig. Cherries worth gathering, you cannot think that figs. My teeth are but met in, what melons I see cold, pined on, piled and flesh, dish of gold, too huge for me to bold. What peaches have a valiant nap, placid grapes without one seed, Odorous indeed must be the mead, whereupon they grow, the pure, the wave they drink, the lilies at the brink, the sweet, sugar sweet their sap. Golden head by golden head, like two pigeons in one nest, folded in which were others' wings, I lay down in this curtain bed, curtain bed, like two blossom bosoms, blossoms on one stem. Like two flakes of newly fallen snow, like two wands of ivory, tipped with gold of all 
things. Moon and stars gazed at in them all. Winds sang to them lullaby. Lumbering owls were born to fly. Not a black flipped to and fro. Round the tested cheek to cheek and breast to breast. Locked together in one nest. Early in the morning when the first cock crowed. His waning then they bees. I was busy and sweet and busy. Laura rose with Lizzie. Fletched in honey, milked the cows, aired and sat to rights the house. Needed cakes of the whitest wheat, cakes for dainty mouths to eat. Next churned butter, whipped up cream, fed the poultry, sat and sewed. Talked as modest maidens should, Lizzie with an open heart. Laura in an absent dream, one consent and one sick and part, one wobbling for the mere brightened day's delight, one longing for the night. A length sl- slow evening came. When went there with patches to the need ready brook. These are paid most placid in a look. Laura most like a leaping flame. They drew the glunging water from its depth. Leaves are plucked purple and rich golden flags. Then turning homeward said of sunset flushes, their furthest loftiest crags. Come, Laura, it's not another maiden lags. No willful squirrel wags. That beasts and birds are fast asleep, but Laura loitered still above along the rushes, and said the bank was steep, and said the hours still early, and drew not full the wind, not a chill. Listen neither, ever, but not catching a cosmic cry. Come by, come by, with his literal but little jungle of sugar baited words, for not for all her watching, once discerning. Even more evil and goblin, racing, whisking, tumbling, hobbling, let alone the herds used to tremble along the glen in groups of single, a brisk fruit merchant men. Till Lizzie urged, Oh, Laura, come! I hear the fruit call, I dare not look. You should not loiter longer at this brook. Come with me home, the stars rise, the moon bends her arc, each glowworm wink. Her spark. Let us cut it home before the night grows dark, for clouds may gather through this summer's river. Put out the lights and drench us through. Then, if we lose our way, what shall we do? Laura turned as cold as stone to find a sister curd a cry alone. That goblin cry, Come buy your fruits, come buy. Must she then buy? No more some de- some such dainty fruit. Must she no more such as fuchsia's superconscious departure find, gone deaf and blind? A tree of life drooped from the root. She said not one word. The heart saw ache, but peering in through the darkness, naught discerning, trudged home, a picture dripping all the way, so crept to bed and lay, silent till Lizzie slept. Then set up in passionate yearning, and gnashed her teeth for bulking desire. I wept as her heart would break. Day after day, night and night, Laura kept watch in vain, a sudden silence that's seed in pain. She never caught again the robin cry, come by, come by. She never spied the goblin men, hawking the fruits along the glen. But when the moon, noon waxed bright, her hair grew thick and grey. Fin grey, she dwindled as the fair moon doth turn to self decay and burn a fire away. One day, remembering the colonel's stone, she sat by a wall that faced the south, drewed in it with tears, hope for a root, watching for a waxing shot. But there came none, it never saw the sun, it never felt the trickling moisture run, while with sunken eyes and faded mouth. She dreamed of mellows as the traveller sees, both ways and desert twice, with an isle of leaf clubbered trees, and birds the first year in a sandful breeze. She no more swept the house, tended the fowls of cows, fetched honey, kneaded cakes of wheat, brought water from the brook, but sat listless in the cloud chimney nook, and would not eat. Tender Lizzie could not bear to watch her sister Cranford's care. Yet not to share, she she night the morning caught the woman's cry. Come by, I watch your face. Come by, come by. 
Beside the brook along the glen, he heard the tramps of grumbling men. The yoke could stir, poor Lydia could not hear. Long to buy fruit to come for her, she feared to pay not dear too dear. She fought the genie in her grave. Who should, who should have been a bride, but who for joy's bride's hope to have? Her sick and died in her great prime at early, earliest winter time with the fairy, first glaze, grazing rhyme, with the first note of crisp winter time. To Laura dwindling seemed knocking at death's door, then Laura weighed no more, bitter worse, better worse, but put a silver penny in her purse, kissed Laura, kissed across the beef with clumps of fusy, over twilight haunted by the brook, and for the first time in life, Grand to listen and look, laugh every goblin. They spied her peeping, come to walls her hobbling, flying, running, leaping, puffing, blowing, chuckling, clapping, growing, chuckling and gobbling, moping and mowing, full of airs and graces, pulling away faces, dementia glan- demure glances, cat-like, rat-like, pencil, wombat-like, snail pace in a hurry, parrot voice in a whistler, how to kill skelter, Hurry, show, show, scurry, clattering like magpies, fluttering like pig, pigeons, gliding her fish it like fishes, hunt her and kissed her, squeezed and caressed her, stretched up their dishes, pan, panners and ap- plates. Look at our apples, russets and dun, bob at ch- uh, ch- cherries, bite at our peaches, citrons and dates, grapes for the asking, pears red with, with basking, out in the sun, pear, plums do on their twigs, plum, pluck them. And suck them, pomegranate figs. Good folks, said Lizzie, my full genie. Please give me much and many. Hold out her apron, toss them in uh, them a penny. Nay, take a seat with us, honour and eat with us, they answered, grinning. Our feast is but beginning. Night yet is early, warm and pretty, too pearly, wakeful and starry. Some fruits as these no man can carry. Half their bloom would fly. Half their dew would dry, half their flavour would pass by. Sit down and feast of us, be welcome guests of us. Cheer you and rest of us. Thank you, said Lizzie, but one visits at home, alone with me. So without further parsley, if you do not sell me any of your fruits through much and many, give me back my silver penny. I toss you over for a fee. They begin to scratch their plates, no longer waggling, purring, but visibly demurring, grunting and snaring. One called her proud, cross grained and civil, her tones waxed loud, her looks were evil, lashing their tails, they trod and trussled her, elbowed and trussled her, clawed with their nails, barking, mewing, hissing, mocking, tore her ground, and soiled her stocking, twitched her hair out of the body roots, stumped upon her tender foot, held her hands and squeezed them through their fruits, up against her mouth to take to make her eat. White and golden Lizzie stood, like a lily out in the flood, like a rock of blue vein stone, lashed by tides of stupidity, like a bacon left alone in a hungry, roaring sea, sending up a golden fire, like a fruit crowning of orange tree, white with blossoms, honey sweet, boars beset by wasp and bee, like a royal virgin town, tumbled with gliding doom and spire, close beleaguered by a fleet, Mare to tug her, stand her down. May, may lead a house of water, Twenty cannot make her drink. Though the goblin cluff and caught her, Coats and fought her, Bullied and besought her, Scratched her, pinched her, back Black as ink, Kicked her, knocked her, mauled her, knocked her. Lily uttered not a word, Would not open her lip from the lip, Lest they should, should scram, A mouth for in, a laugh in heart to feel that the drip of juice that stolloped all her face and lodged in dimples in her chin a stripped her neck that quaked like curd and last the evil people about worn out by resistance flung back a penny kicked their fruit along whatever road they took not leaving root or stone or shoot some withered into the ground some divided into the brook dived into the brook a ring and ripple some scuttled in, scuttled into the gale without a sound, so vanished in the distance. In a smart 
ache tingle. Lizzie went over her way. Knew not was night nor day. Sprang up the brook and tore into the flues. Freddy corpse and twingle. I heard her penny jingle. Browning in her purse is bound was music to her ear. She ran and ran as she feared fear some goblin men dogged her with leave or curse or something worse. But not one goblin scurried her after, nor was she pricked by fear. A kind heart made her windy paced and urged her home quite out of breath and haste and inward laughter. She cried Laura up the gate, do you miss me? Come and kiss me. Never find my my bruises. Hug me, kiss me, suck my juices. Squeeze them goblin fruits for you. Goblin pulp and goblin dew. Eat me, drink me, uh, love me. Laura, make much of me. For your, for your sake, I braved the glen. I go, had to go with goblin merchantmen. Laura startled from her chair. Flung her arms in the air. Cat clutched at her. Lizzie, Lizzie, you have you tasted? For my sake, the folk forbidden. Must you, must your life like mine be hidden? Your life, young life, like mine be wasted? Undone in my undoing? A ruin in my ruin? First he crankled, ridden, golden ridden. She clung about her sister, kissed and kissed and kissed her. Tears once again, refreshed her sunken eyes, dropping like rain after long sultry dove. Kissing, shaking with anguish, fear and pain, she kissed and kissed her with a hungry mouth. A lip began to scorch, and then that juice was wormwood to her tongue. She loathed the feast, withering at one possessed, she leaped and sung. Row rented all her robe and rang, her lions in her lamental haste, and beat her chest, her locks streamed like the torch, borne by a race at full speed, or like the mane of horses in their flight, or like an eagle when she stirs the light. Straight towards the sun, or like a caged thing fled, freed, or like a flying flag when the armies run. Swift fire spread through her veins, not a heart met the fire smouldering there, and overbore its lesser flame. She called the bitterness without a name, or oh, fool to choose such part of soul consuming care, since failed in the mortal strife, like the watchtower of a town, which of earthquake shatters down. Like a lightning stricken mast, like a wind not rooted tree spun about, like a foam top wilted spout, cast up down headlong in a sea, she felt at last pleasure pass, anguish pass. It is death, or is it life? Life about death, the night came. Light along Lizzie watched her by her, counted her pulse, the lagging stir, felt with her breath, held water. To her lips and cooled her face with tears and fanning eyes. But when the first berries chirped about their caves, her early vapours plodded to their place. Oh, golden streams and dew wet grass, bow in the morning winds to so brisk the grass. New buds with a new day, open up, open a cup like lilies in the stream. Laura woke as from a dream, laughed in an instant old way. Hug Lizzie, but twice, not twice, or thrice, a blooming glocks show not for Fred or Gray. A breath for sweet as May, and light danced in her eyes. Days, weeks, months, years afterwards, and both were wives. Their mother's children of their own, their mother's heart beset with fears, their loves, lies bound up in tender lives. No one would call the little ones. And tell them of her early prime. Those pleasant days, long gone, of, her, of not returning time. We talk about the haunted lane, the wicked, quaint merchant fruit, merchant men, their fruits like honey to the throat, or poisoned in the blood. Men sell not such in any town, would tell them how her sister stood, deadly peril to do her good, and when the fiery antidote. When joining hands to little hands, or bid them cling together, for there is no friend like a sister, a calm on a stony weather, to cheer one of a tedious way, fetch one if one goes astray, to lift one if one totters down, to strengthen whilst one stands.
Song of the Witches from Macbeth by William Shakespeare. From Macbeth, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cold and bubble, for lid of feigny snake in the corner of boil and break. Isle of Newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, Adder's falcon, blind worm's sting, Lidder's leg and howlet's wing, For a charm of powerful trouble, Like a hell broth boil and bubble, Double, double toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble, Corn it with a baboon's blood, Then the charm is firm and good. Windigo by Louise Ed- Edrich. The Windigo is a flesh eating wintry demon with a man buried deep inside of it. In some to ruin series, a young girl quenches his monster by forcing boiling lard down its throat, thereby releasing the human at the core of ice. You know it, I was coming for you, little one, when the kettle jumped into the fire. Tails flapped on the hooks, and dogs crept off, groaning to the deepest part of the woods. In the hackles a dry brush, a thin laughter started up. Mother scolded the whole room, and smoothed in the pot, and called you to eat. But I spoke in the cold trees. New one, I have come for you. Child hide and lie still. The sun mech pushed that sour through the air. Copper burned in a raw wood. You saw me dragged toward you. My touch, oh, touch me, I murmured. I licked the soles of your feet. You dug your hands into my pale, belting fur. I stole you off, a huge thing in my bristling armour. Steam rolled from my wintry arm. With every arms, each leaf shivered from the bushes we passed, until they stood naked spread, like the clean spines of fish. Then your warm hands hold over and showed themselves full the ice and snow. I would darken the spill all the night running, until at last morning broke. A cold earth I carried your, your home, a river shaking in the sun. by Louise Gluck. Even now this landscape is ascending and the hills darken, the oxen sleep in their blue yoke. The fields having been picked clean and sheaves bound evenly are piled at the roadside among sick cling of film well as the tooth moon rises. This is the barrenness of the harvest or pestilence, and the wife leaning out the window with her hand extended, as in payment the sea's distinct cold calling, Come here, come here, little one, and the soul creeps out the tree. Because I could not stop for death by Emily Dickerson. Because I could not stop for death, you can't even stop for me. The carriage is held by just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no what, no haste. I put away my labour and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove. A recess in the ring, 
We passed the fields of grazing grain. We passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us, the Jews. Jew, quivering and chill. For only gossamer, by Graham, by template, only Tully. He paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, a carice niece in the ground. Since then, tis centuries yet, what feels shorter than the day. I first surmised the heads, horses' heads, were toward eternity. Hallows Eve by Dorothy Feria Tanning You perfect make it otherwise, yesterday torn in shreds, lightning fouls and sulphur eyes, river part of the breathing beds. Here bones creak and pulverize, doom creeps in the rubber treads, countless over wild lives, minds are reveling like threads, try lips exchange to tranquilize, fears of age. And general dreads. Sit tight, be perfect, swack the spies. Don't take flaccid of fountain heads. Drink first the antidotes, otherwise, you and a werewolf newly weds. Owner of the Night by Mark, Mark Dotty Interrogates whatever walks this shadow lay, this hour not reserved for you. Ooh. Are you to enter it? Orion's head over hills, above the road, jewel belt, glittering, glinting straight starlight. A few two eyes looking down from the air. Beacons in reverse, its light pours in towards her appetite. Until she wings her noiseless outline between our rooftop and the stars. Over this door and all the doors, hidden in the grass, dreaming voles. Firefied providence, wasps in the palace there hollowed under the hill. Mole resting his face against its braid hands. Perch, blink, pose, the evening question to the sleepless, while the moon is where, in one scatters on the field of ink. Who maps this, the owner of the light? Look upon the mirror amid the antlers, before the upper vaults begin to lighten and recede. Do you hear, I said, and the face looks down from the night. Do you hear me? Who reads this page? Who writes it? Omens by Cecilia Lemmerbart The dead bird cut of a bruise, the smaller than an eye, swollen shut, is king among omens. Who could blame the ants of feasting? Let him cast the first crumb. He once tended the oracles, now we would lie in photograph. A fingerprint, a hand we never saw coming. A man draws a chalk outline, first in mind, around nothing, then another, the body of another man. He does this without thinking. What can I do about the white room I left behind? What can I do about the great stones? I walk among them now. What can I do but sing? Even a small cut can sing all day. There are tired nights I take back. Nostalgia is a thin moon, disappearing into the sky, like cold and feeling iron. I dreamed he was a drowned man, crowned of prosperous seaweed in your hair, water in your shoes, or woke up despair for air. I another dream I've filled, like you combed through me, 
searching for something. You only thought you had lost. What would we left at the altar of Sauron? What blessed thing will we leave tomorrow? by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight jury, where I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, uh, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some gently rapping, At my chamber door, thus some visitor I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, oh this and nothing more. Oh, distinctly, I remember, it was a bleak December. Each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished to morrow, vainly I sought to borrow, for my book's cerise of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost and all, for the rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name the more. Nameless here for evermore. In a sunken, sad and certain rustling of each purple curtain filled me, filled me with fatic, fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now still the beating of my heart I stood repeating. This some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, and I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I uh, was napping, and so gently you came tapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams a mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and still the gave no token. The only word they had spoken was a whispered word no more. This I whispered, and the echo mumbled back the word, the no, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something my window, Latrice, at my window, Latrice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, this mystery explore. Let my heart be still in a moment, and this mystery explore. It's the wind, and nothing more. Open I hear, I flung the shadow when, with many a flirt and flutter. In there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least of obsedient spayed he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but when mine or lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bus of Peleus, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it swore, through my crest be sworn, and shaven now, I said, thou art share, no craven, glassy grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me why, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's pat- 
Newtonian shore. Cope with. Quote. If there is the raven, never more. Much I marvelled this uh, and gaily found to hear discourse so plainly, though its answers little meaning. Did it ever see bore? For we cannot help agreeing that no living being, human being, ever yet has blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird of peace upon the sculptured, sculptured, should press above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only but one, that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, our friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. <coughs> Startled as the stillness broken, by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, well, it, it mutters us in only stock and store, caught from some happy master, some unmerciful disaster, followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore. Till the drink drinks of his hope, that melancholy broken bore, burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling, it all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of the bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy until fancy, thinking that uh, this ominous bird of yore. What is this grim, ungainly, gas gaunt, an honest bird of yore, meaning it's croaking, nevermore? Thus I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose very eyes now burden, burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at cl- ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamp light gloated over. But those velvet, velvet, violet lining, the lamp light gloating over, shall press ah nevermore. Then me thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer. Swung up the celepine, whose footfalls twinkled on the turf floor. Rich, I cried, thy God have lent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee. Repent, repent and never me. For my memories of the more, quaff, O oh quaff, this kind and beef, and forget this lost and all. Quoth the raven, never more. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. Whether tempest sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert desert land enchanted, on this home by Homer haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there a bane in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. By the heaven that bends above us, by the God he both adore. Tell this soul that is sorrow laden, if within the distant Hayden, he still grasps a Satan maiden, whom the angels bore, name the more. <coughs> Cross a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name the more, copeth the raven, never more. By that word one sign of parting, bird of fiend, I shriek up, up starting. Get thee back unto the tempest and a night Plutonian straw. Leave no black plume as a token, that lie thy soul have spoken. Leave thy loneliness unbroken. Quit the bus above my door, take thy beak from my heart, and take thy form from off my door. 
quoth her the raven nevermore. And the raven never flirting, fitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the plodded bust of Publius, just above a chamber door. With his eyes have a weaving of a demon, with, and his eyes having all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and a lamp light over him, steaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul for that, from that, that shadow that lies floating on the floor, still be lifted, nevermore. You've been listening to the horror theatre with poetry from the minds of some who like to write about horror. I hope you've enjoyed these readings by myself, Mark Anthony Baines, on behalf of Comedy Friendly, so Comedy Friendly Zombie but Limited. A monster rolls. Darkness surrounds him. Darkness don't come in the sky. No stars in the sea of the night. What do we see but not in our minds? Do we not know what is in the dinner? That's all I can say, and I will be, but evil is in my mind. Evil is in the to spare the night. Who hear you scare you? I give you a fight! I give you a scary melody, in a tune you know so well. Halloween will be soon upon us, within a twinkle of an eye, the zombie will approach us. The scary window, the scary stink, the corruption, the cause of evil now. And in the background, you'll hear a mockingbird sing. And the screaming soul, it whispers. Alone in the night, kids crying, ghosts nearby, a creepy instrumental from a film known before. The horror scene opens up the door, a zombie sound leads to a call. It gives you a scary vibe that you don't want to hear before the EMF. Is that a scary tone? The amazing thing happened to hear a ghost howling. With a fret, Halloween will soon be here. Yet again, the horror sound. Summoning the, the final entry, Emily. Midnight, dark woods. The sinister laugh. And ghosts. Dreadful sound. An evil and ambulance. Monster scream. And witches laugh. Thank you for listening to the horror theme. Goodbye. And happy sleep.